Welcome, friends, to another edition of Tiffin Box TV. I'm your host, Seishu, and I have the privilege of and honor of speaking with Roberto Valenzuela, a wedding photographer based in L.A., and just returned from Seattle. He's a creative live instructor as well. You may have seen him online. Uh, Roberto, thanks for joining me today, my friend. What's up, Seishu, man? How's it going, everyone? Uh, it's going well for me because uh, I think we, we finally made it, uh, made it all, this, all this happen um, we've, we've got to speak a little bit about your background because a lot of my audience probably doesn't know your, your background. You're from Mexico, right? Mexico City, good Mexico. tacos, good tequila, good whatever tequila. you need. Indeed, indeed. We're there for you, man. Awesome. And you've made your, a name for yourself in the U.S. and um, beyond the U.S. actually for your style of photography. And I've been looking at your work um, and uh, it's truly just inspiring because of the way you've you've approached every single wedding um you you claim or at least your your three favorite words are timeless elegant and romantic which i think is interesting because uh you know it, it sort of brings a latin flavor to the whole mix doesn't it a little salsa man a little, a little hot sauce on the photos indeed you know <laughs> <laughs> you like how everything is like spicy with me it is. I, I noticed you guy. You gave away hot sauce like on day one of your last creative life. It's just natural for me to do that. You can't teach a class without giving away hot sauce. Indeed. You know. Indeed. I mean, it just doesn't seem right. It's like if you're gonna talk about spicing up your photography. Yes. What better way than giving out some hot sauce? <laughs> you know, it's like, come on, people. <laughs> you know. Indeed. So did, uh, I'm just. I was always curious to ask to find out. Did you bring all that from from Mexico, or did, or did you? Did you have it? Did you have it imported from Mexico into LA and then shipped to Seattle? What, what was? What's your secret? I got my donkey from Mexico, <laughs> and I just rode my donkey with a bunch of those. You know, those bags you put in the in the butt of the donkey, left and right, like next to it, over the sure. over the back. Just put a bunch of hot sauce, and then I rode my donkey all the way through the border, and they just let me through. They just said, "Come on, you're there for creative life. Get through." There you go. And then. Uh, I came through and I said thank you. I waved with my hat, and awesome. uh, <laughs> man, I've been here for 27 years wow. in the United States. No, I understand that. I understand that. But you, I was just curious. I mean, where do you get that kind of that volume of hot sauce? Uh, you know, from <laughs> I'm assuming it was from Mexico. That's why I said, hey, did you bring it in from Mexico? It was from it, it was from a very Mexican store called Whole Foods. <laughs> <laughs> I it's, love it. It's it's a it's as Mexican as it gets. <laughs> I bet, I bet. All right, let's let's go back to speaking about and talking about photography because I think that's what we're here for. Um, nah, let's nah. continue the hot sauce thing. <laughs> no, <laughs> listen, uh, you you've got a you've got a, a very cool uh, posing webinar coming up thanks to Shoot That Edit. Uh, that's coming up on June tenth, um, and it's called Live Posing Critique. I mean, this is I'm reading right off their page. You're actually gonna to, to conduct a, a critique of, of a posing uh, session, I guess, or you're going to help somebody through a posing session. Is yeah, we, uh, Shutor Edit and I, you know, Shutor Edit and I, we work together to provide these free webinars and allow people to take their photos, the photos they take at their portrait sessions, wedding sessions, high school senior sessions, whatever you want to do, uh, fashion shoots. And it's kind of cool to submit your photo and you kind of want to know what 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 does someone think someone that has experience judging photos looking at photos looking at the good and the bad what could be improved how do you use the location how is the lighting done how could the lighting how could they have how could the lighting be improved i mean if i was if i was uh in fact i still do it now i still do photo shoots and i still have my friends kind of say, hey, what do you think about this? What do you think of the lighting here? And sometimes people say to you, you know, this is great, but th this, this, uh, this thing could have been a little bit better. And then next time you do a photo shoot, it's just a little nugget of information in your head. You're like, okay, next time. For example, one of the biggest things people do is they try to rush. So you rush through a photo shoot, so you, and you can tell when you see the photo that there was an element of rushing. So I, can, I, I will tell people, I can see that, that it's rushing, so maybe try to slow down your voice, 
have a clear thought in your head of what you want to achieve, and then just take your picture slowly and nicely. Don't worry about f- looking stupid in front of your client or anything. Just take 30 seconds to think about it and then shoot. I think these uh, photo critiques are super important. Um, they're super fun. They're, you're learning. You're watching in your pajamas. You're not, it's not hard. It's free. It's fantastic. So everyone should just RSVP for that. And if you're not going to submit your photos, even though you totally should, at least you get to see what I say and about other photos. Uh, and if you do submit photos, you can keep your name anonymous. So you don't have to say, this is from you know, my good friend Sesho. You, you can just say, this is from nobody. And then you can see your photo critique. Indeed. Uh, you've written an entire book about uh, posing, and uh, it's done so well. It's got five stars on the Amazon sh- store uh, front. It's uh, called Picture Perfect Posing, Practicing the Art of Posing for Photographers and Models. Uh, you've written a book for both photographers and models, which is kind of cool. Um, <laughs> and this was this is a book that came out a couple of years ago now, uh, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, you've got another one coming out called Picture Perfect Lighting, uh, Mastering the Art and Craft of Light for Portraiture, which... So this is the I'm totally Picture Perfect uh, Lighting uh, one. Oh, it's already out. Fantastic. It's not out. It's not out. This Ooh. is just a mock-up cover that the publisher sent me. Okay. It's, it's actually over Picture Perfect Posing. <laughs> Oh, I see. This, gotcha. this is the actual Picture Perfect Posing book. Uh, and then they sent me basically these mock-ups because they wanted to see how it, w- it would fit. And if you put it around, when you go to the bookstores, it will basically look like this, you know, and sure. it will have the back, except my photo will go here and so forth. Sure. So this is the one that I'm writing right now. Um, Picture Perfect Posing came out actually just a year ago. A year ago, okay. And uh, this is doing really well. And Picture Perfect Practice um, is doing extremely well because that one became the number one selling book in Amazon for, for photography books. So it's pretty cool. I mean, for wedding photography books. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. I think uh, buying books is the, one of the best educational values you can have. Absolutely. And, and also attending you know, short courses and webinars like the one you're going to be go, doing with shoot.edit. Um, you know, there's lots and lots of opportunities to learn these days now um, online. What, what do you think, from, from, a, from a perspective of, uh, of, a, of a beginner, let's say someone's starting out and says, hey, I'm really, I'm really interested in wedding photography. Uh, this, is what I wanted, this is what I need to, to learn. And, and what, should, what would you suggest someone starting out should learn first and foremost about photography? Well, I mean, there's, I think uh, photographers have this mentality. I, I, I came into this industry 10 years ago, and uh, I see a lot of photographers that are very energetic. You know, it's kind of cool to go, to, go buy a camera and, and, and try out photography. I mean, it's, it's accessible, you know. Um, but by no means is, is, is if you want to become a professional photographer, if you want to pay your bills, pay your pay for your children's school uniforms, pay for your kids' uh, health insurance, pay for your car. If you want to become a money-making uh, photographer, not, not just a buddy, somebody that just shoots, shoots a bunch of sh- um, shoots for free, you're going to have to invest money in, in your education. I mean, when you go to law school, you expect to pay for law school fees. When you go to medical school, you expect to pay for medical school. But photographers expect to learn as much as a medical doctor, but they don't want to pay anything for, for education. And they try to go to YouTube and, and do these things. And, and sometimes, you know, you have all these broken education. So here's what I think. You can go, if you're starting out and you don't have a lot of cash to invest in your education, take advantage of this shoot.edit webinar. Take advantage of some YouTube videos. Take advantage of Creative Life when they're doing their live broadcasts. I just did a class on Creative Life last week called Picture Perfect Lighting which is the name of the book. So if you forget the name of the class, it's just Picture Perfect Lighting is, is, the, is the class in Creative Life. That was free broadcasted. And if you want to buy that, it's only $120 or something. It's very, very inexpensive. But once you start to, to develop more of an understanding of what it takes to be a photographer, that's when you need to make a decision and, and take, your, take your education to a higher level. So you have to say, I tell people, if you are... Um, if, if posing is an issue, if posing people looks contrived, if it looks like you're kind of going like this, like you're posing people, like, oh, my God, look at me, I'm posing. If your poses look like that, then you should come to my, one, of my, one of my posing workshops. 
And if you don't like what I do, then go to somebody else's posing workshops. But point is, go to workshops. <laughs> you know, you don't have to go to mine. You can go to whoever you want. Right. Um, I teach two-day classes on posing. It is 100% dedicated to posing. And the posing style that I'm teaching is what you said on the website. It is an elegant, it is a timeless style, which means that it's not like this or like this. It, it's very much posing that looks not post. It looks fluid. It looks romantic. It looks ro- beautiful. It looks timeless. That's the, the, you know that kind of posing that when you look at the picture, you don't even know that there's a pose. You just kind of go right through the image. Mm-hmm. That's the posing that I'm teaching about. Um, I comp- when I teach my workshops, I tell people the posing that we're going to learn is similar to like a pianist. Like when you go to a pianist a concert, if the pianist is so good that the music just comes out of the piano and his technical ability is so flawless that you don't get distracted by his fingers, then all you get is the result of the beautiful music. But if he's struggling technically, you can enjoy the music, but you're kind of distracted by his fingers trying to create the music and you're and it, it sometimes the fingers trip over each other and, and then you're like, oh, that was so kind of beautiful, but then the fingers are going crazy. So if you get distracted by the fingers or the technical ability, then you don't hear the music as fluid or as, as, as it was intended. When you are posing, it's the same thing. I try to pose in a way that you don't even see the pose. You don't even see that I'm, I'm telling people to pose. It just looks like the person was caught in a perfect moment where her body happens to be beautiful and curvy and, and curves are, and sexy and her back is not slouching. And her fingers are not doing something funky like this or something like that. It's basically posing that doesn't have any distractions on it, you know, it, but it just looks fluid. Now, do you offer these workshops only in L.A. or is it all over the, the world? I'm teaching them all over the United States right now. Um, I, the, I have one coming up in L.A., but that one's sold out. Uh, the next one that I have is in Seattle, Washington, and that's on June 23rd and June 24th. That one only, have, only has three spots left. The one that has a lot of spots left is Chicago, Illinois, and that's going to be on August 18 and 19. New York City has plenty of spots. That's October 6th and 7th, and Boston has plenty of spots. That's October 20th and 21st, and the last one is in Los Angeles in November 3rd and 4th. Um, I am going to teach all of these workshops, whether they sell out or not. So if you, are, if you want to go, you're like, well, what happens if he cancels the workshop? I'm not canceling the workshop. I already bought the plane tickets. I already reserved the hotels. It's going to happen. It's just a matter of whether you want to learn and take away the pain of posing or you decide not to do it and then you continue um, going the way you're going. Oh, where can one find out about these workshops, uh, Roberto? Uh, they are going to be on pictureperfectpractice.com. Okay. So instead of picture perfect so instead of picture perfect lighting pictureperfectpractice.com and that's the title of my first book that's the same title as the website awesome. if people are interested in finding that information pictureperfectpractice.com click on the workshop link and you can find the information there i do highly recommend the one in chicago new york or boston they have plenty of spots and those are going to be really fun we're going to have really great models and everything awesome i'm quite likely to see you in the boston workshop because oh yeah, that's right. I, I live I live about two hours away, so it makes it very easy and convenient for me to. You get live there. in Connecticut, right? I live in Connecticut. Um, very cool. So, but thanks for thanks for joining me today to talk a little bit about why it's important to learn about posing in a hand, and really how how critiques uh, like the one you're about to have on June 10th are going to elevate people's uh, uh, people's skill set. You know, be able to do this effortlessly. I think that's the point. You know, be able to go into a uh, a situation and, and pose people in a natural way, whereas, like you just said, I think it's such an important uh, skill set that anybody should really, really have. And you do that so very well. Um, I think uh, one thing that's really cool, if I can just say something sure, special. Sure, please. Um, one thing that people miss is this. When a client comes to your place to see your work, they may not be experts in lighting and they may not be experts in composition. So they, you could shoot something in flat light and they'll think it's just there, it's fine. Like nobody critiques it. Or you could shoot something in front of something distracting and people say, well, that's artistic or whatever. 
But when somebody looks bad on a post, they know right away. Like if you take a photo of your client and your and the and the post just just looks like she's hunching or she's doing something funny with her elbow or you make her look bigger than she is, any of those things, it's going to be automatic. There is no need to be a photography expert. She can just be a lawyer, a doctor, a pharmacist, an art, a, a carpenter. It doesn't matter. She will look at her photo and say, oh my gosh, I look terrible. And if a lot of your photos look kind of like that, it's going to be a problem. You know, if you're trying to book people or you try to get people too excited about your work, if you went word of mouth in your community and you're like, oh my gosh, I, I just had my photo shoot with Seshu and he totally made me look amazing or it was beautiful. I, I look great in every picture. Um, people get excited about that. I think posing, it is crucial yes. to be able to understand it. It's it not like, meh, I just keep shooting people holding hands and kissing all the time. You know, at the end of the day, you're going to, you're going to reach a level of competition where everyone is doing holding hands and kissing and hugging. And you're just not going to be able to separate yourself. And the only way to get any business is by lowering your prices and going cheaper and cheaper and cheaper than the next person. So if I, I just don't think that's a good route to take. Um, I, you know, these, these workshops I'm teaching, for example, are two days. Everyone should be taking these. If not with me, with somebody else. It doesn't matter if it's with me or somebody else. It just matters that they're going after education and doing it with somebody that they want to learn from. Absolutely. So... Um, let me uh, f like wrap up though. I, I the question that, that I've had in my mind is how did, how did you get to be this good? Is it just <laughs> <laughs> just is it is it just practice uh, uh, for so many number of years? Is it just uh, the fact that you've learned it from somebody else? I mean, what what, what has come together for you uh, that makes you the the authority on posing and lighting at the moment? Well, combination of things. Obviously, I learned from a lot of photographers in the past. I invested a lot of money myself in education when I was learning. I still uh, take workshops nowadays. I, I, in fact, at WPI, I was taking workshops. Um, I, I don't think you stop learning. So that's an attitude thing. It's an attitude thing. I, I'm always a student. Okay. I don't think I am an expert. I mean, I am an expert in posing, but I don't think I'm at, a, I'm at an expert level where I don't have to learn anymore. So the first thing to answer your question is an attitude. The second one is I do practice quite a bit. Um, I, I'm, I sometimes I'm forced to practice issues. Sometimes I don't have a choice because I am a judge for a lot of photography competitions around the world. In fact, I am the chair for the posting competition, at w, I mean for the print competition at WPPI. When you are forced to go through 3,000 images and find what's wrong with them or what's right with them and how you can improve, and you are forced to do that five times a year with competitions around Europe, Spain, Mexico, uh, Canada, United States, even Estonia and the Baltic states. When you are forced to be to, for, with 4,000 images and you're like, okay, you need to f analyze these, you get quite good. You know, you get quite good whether you want it or not. <laughs> like, when was the last time? Maybe one of the listeners, let me ask you guys this. When was the last time you guys went through 4,000 images and analyzed every single one? You know, when you do that, you are going to get pretty darn good. Yeah, okay. <laughs> you know? I think, it's, so. I think what, what you've, what you've uh, sort of highlighted or underscored is the fact that it comes down to experience and, and really getting there and working at it. So um, I think this is, this is, again, another great takeaway from, from our conversation. It does take a little bit of work or more, a lot of work, uh, it, depending on your skill set, uh, and your interest level and your passion for what you do uh, to be able to do what you you know what you're set out to, setting out to do uh, and right. uh, this is this is really a phenomenal uh, takeaway for at least for me so thanks again Roberto thanks for joining me today Sergio, thank you for inviting me man good time so see you guys at the uh, shoot.edit webinar absolutely take care okay bye, bye take care bye <laughs>